In this segment, we'll show you how to assemble your new AgriFab 175 pound toe spiker spreader. We'll begin by pressing a flanged bearing part AA into the flat side of each spike disc, part 14. Then press a flanged bearing part AA into both sides of the two drive discs, part 13. Next, Press a flanged bearing part AA into the flat side of both center braces, part 15. Then assemble a small spacer, part DD, in a 5 8 inch washer, part O, onto the axle. Now insert the axle through the end of the frame that contains a pre-assembled sprocket. Next, slide a 5 8 inch washer, part O, onto the axle. Then slide on a drive disc as shown, part 13. Now, slide on a 5 8 inch washer. Then, slide on a drive disc. Then, slide on another 5 8 inch washer. Next, slide a spike disc onto the axle with the flat side facing the previously installed parts. Then, follow the disc with a medium spacer, part EE. Next, slide on another spike disc with the flat side facing away from the spacer. Then, slide on a 5 8 inch washer, part O, a spring, part BB, and another 5 8 inch washer. Now insert another spike disc, flat side toward the previously installed parts. Then follow that with a medium spacer, part EE. Then insert another spike disc with the flat side facing away from the spacer. Now slide a 5 8 inch washer onto the axle followed by a center brace, part 15, with the flange facing away from the washer. Next, insert a large spacer, part FF. Then slide on another center brace with the flange facing the spacer. Now slide on a 5 8 inch washer. Next, slide a spike disc onto the axle with the flat side facing the previously installed parts. Follow the spike disc with a medium spacer. Then add another spike disc with the flange side towards the spacer. Next. Slide on a 5 8 inch washer, a spring, and then another 5 8 inch washer. Now, slide a spike disc onto the axle with the flat side facing the previously installed parts. Follow the spike disc with a medium spacer, and then another spike disc with the flange side towards the spacer. Then, use a plastic tie around each set of spike discs that surround the springs. Tighten the discs to compress the springs to allow room for the rest of the assembly. Now, slide on a medium spacer. Next, slide a spike disc onto the axle with the flat side facing the previously installed parts. Next, slide on a medium spacer. Now, add another spike disc with the flange side towards the spacer. Then, add a 5 8 inch washer. Now, slide the end of the axle through the spreader frame. You may need to straighten the discs on the other side of the springs to allow it to slide freely. Next, slide a 5 8 inch washer onto the end of the axle. Then, insert a cotter pin, part V, and spread the ends to secure it. Now, insert two cotter pins into the drive discs and then spread the ends open. Then cut and remove the plastic ties from the spike discs. Spring tension is released suddenly when the plastic ties are cut. Keep clear of the spike discs to prevent injury. Now, assemble the chain around the sprockets and fasten the ends using the connecting link. Then temporarily install two 5 16 by 1 inch carriage bolts, part H with 5 16 inch nylock nuts, part K, with the bolt heads facing the long end of the lift tube assembly. Leave loose for now. Now attach the lift tube assembly with two shoulder bolts, part I, and two 3 8 inch hex lock nuts, part M. Then loosely assemble the end of the tongue, part 9, to the hopper using quarter by 5 8 inch hex bolts, part F, and two quarter inch nylock nuts, part J. Do not tighten them yet. 
Now attach the tongue to the frame assembly using a quarter by one and three quarter inch hex bolt, part D, two quarter inch flat washers, part Q, and a quarter inch nylock nut, part J. Do not tighten them yet. Next, repeat for the other side. Then attach the tongue in the center brace using 2 quarter inch by 5 8 inch hex bolts part F and 2 quarter inch nylock nuts part J. Do not tighten them yet. Repeat for the other brace. Now assemble the plastic grip, part Z, onto the end of the flow control arm, part 6. Then insert the flow control arm through the slot in the hopper brace. Now, onto a quarter inch by one and one quarter inch hex bolt, part C. Slide on a quarter inch flat washer, part Q. A nylon washer, part R. And then slide it through the flow control arm. Then add another nylon washer and slide the bolt through the hopper brace's bracket. Now add two quarter inch nylock nuts, part J. Tighten the first nylock nut until there is noticeable resistance moving the flow control arm, and then tighten the second nylock nut. Now place the flow control rod through the hole at the end of the flow control arm. Then assemble the two ferrules, part CC, onto the threaded ends of the rod so that approximately 10 threads extend through the ferrules. Now, loosely attach the hopper brace using 2 quarter inch by 5 8 inch hex bolts, part F, 1 quarter inch flat washer, part Q, and 2 quarter inch nylock nuts, part J. Do not tighten them yet. Then, place the end of the hitch bracket with two holes down through the slot in the tongue. Next, attach the hopper brace to the top of the tongue and the hitch bracket to the bottom with the 3 8 inch by 1 inch hex bolt, part B and one 3 8 inch nylock nut, part L. Make sure not to tighten it yet. Now insert the tongue brace, part 8, through the slot in the end plate. Then loosely secure the front hole of the tongue brace to the end plate with a quarter inch by 5 8 inch hex bolt, part F, and a quarter inch nylock nut, part J. Now, loosely secure the rear hole with a quarter inch by 3 quarter inch hex bolt, part E, quarter inch flat washer, part Q, and quarter inch nylock nut part J with the bolt and washer coming from inside the hopper. Do not tighten it yet. Fasten the other end of the tongue brace to the side of the tongue using two quarter inch by five eighths inch hex bolts and quarter inch nylock nuts. Do not tighten them yet. Next, repeat the previous steps to attach the other tongue brace. Now go back and tighten all the installed fasteners. Next, slide a half inch washer, part P, onto a half inch by four inch hex bolt, part A. Then, slide it through a wheel. Now, slide on a half inch washer, part P. Then, thread a half inch jam nut on about halfway. Next, slide the assembly through the transport tube. Now, tighten the jam nut finger tight. Then, secure the wheel with a half inch nylock nut, part S. Then, repeat the wheel installation for the other side. Next, assemble the flow control gauge to the hopper brace using the quarter inch by three quarter inch carriage bolt part G, a nylon washer part R, and the plastic knob part X. Now check to see that the ferrules are adjusted so that approximately 10 threads of the control rod are exposed. Then, 
Insert both ferrules into the brackets on the flow plates. Now, finger tighten a quarter inch nylock nut part J onto each ferrule. Then, check for correct opening of the hopper flow plates. Set the flow control gauge to the highest setting. Move the flow control arm away from the hopper and rest it on the gauge. The slots in the bottom of the hopper should be completely open, and the edge of the flow plates should be clear of the ends in all the slots. If the flow plates are not straight with the slots, screw one ferrule up or down on one side of the control rod. If the flow plates open too far or not far enough, screw both ferrules equally up and down on the control rod. Now move the flow control rod toward the hopper to the off position and verify that the flow plates completely cover the slots in the bottom. Now, tighten the nylon nuts and then loosen them a quarter turn. Now check for proper tension on the hopper flow plates. Set the flow control gauge to the mid-range setting. Then, move the flow control arm against the gauge. Press firmly against the front of the flow plates at the bottom of the hopper. The flow control arm should not move. If the arm moves, Tighten the hex lock nuts on the flow control arm until movement is prevented. Now attach the transport handle, part 3, to the lift arm assembly using the pre-assembled 5 16 by 1 inch carriage bolts and two 5 16 inch nylock nuts, part K. Then slide the handle grip, part Y, onto the transport handle. Now put the unit into the transport position. Next, attach the chain cover to the frame assembly using two quarter inch by 5 8 inch hex bolts, part F quarter-inch flat washers, part Q, and quarter-inch nylock nuts, part J. Now, install the hitch pin, part U, and an eighth-inch hair cotter pin, part W, in the hitch bracket and tongue. 